Hi and welcome back to a new video. You should know this 6900 XT which was from the flood PC from Matthias. And back then when he sent it to me, we figured out that there is like a transportation damage down there, which was caused by, I don't know, or by the flood itself when the PC fell down. Anyway, we seem to have a short within the PCB because whenever you try to plug in this card into a PC, there's instant shutdown of the PSU, which is like triggering some short circuit protection which is most likely because of this part right here. So there could be some kind of short within the PCB. So we're trying to fix that today, or we will figure out if that's even possible. But first of all, we're going to check some resistances of the card. Today's video is supported by Hetzner with the dedicated root server AX41. The experienced data center provider Hetzner offers its hosting products for private and business clients with data centers in Germany and Finland. While offering the most recent and best technical standards, Hetzner also focuses on ecological use of hardware and runs 100% green electricity. The AX41 is a brilliant entrance dedicated root server and comes by default with the 6 core AMD Ryzen 3600 64GB memory and two 512GB NVMe drives. Drives. The entire rack design and also the cooling solutions are developed in-house at Hetzner here in Germany and with 24-7 support, high-speed internet connection, DDoS protection and unlimited traffic. Find more in the link below. So we're trying to probe some resistances of the car to see if there are some shorts in different rails for example. So that point right here where we have an empty solder pad that is related to the memory voltage or memory voltage supply and if we probe between those two points we can get the internal memory resistance which is about 24 ohm. Very typical value. Usually with a graphics card nowadays you have a value between 20 and 60 ohm if you probe the memory. Probing the internal resistance of GPUs is much more difficult. So this is part of the GPU voltage supply and if we probe between ground on the left side and G uh, GPU voltage on the right, you will see that it reads 0 ohm, 0 0.1, maybe 0 0.2 ohm. It goes back to 0 ohm. So in conclusion, you would maybe think that there is a short within GPU voltage supply, which is still possible, but with this type of multimeter we don't know. The issue is with this type of cheap multimeter you usually cannot probe internal resistances of a GPU. And now people might, might complain again that you cannot measure resistances of semiconductors this way. You're obviously correct, but the value itself doesn't matter. We're just comparing. We're measuring between ground and ground for example and then comparing ground to memory, ground to vGPU. And this way we can just figure out if there is a short or not. That's the only thing that matters. It doesn't matter if the value itself reads 24 ohm, if it reads 18 ohm, we just compare. So the exact value won't matter, but the issue is with this type of multimeter, you simply cannot measure the internal resistance of a GPU. That's why we have this beautiful thing right here, which is a milliohmmeter. And just by looking at the probes, you can tell because it's using a four wire technique, it can cancel out the internal resistance of the wire itself, which is not possible doing dual wires, but with four wires, the measurement device itself can cancel out the internal resistance of the wire, which is already helping. In an ideal world, we would probe behind the GPU directly on those small SMD caps. However, the area is just too small to attach those big clamps right here. And it's also important that you have contact to both sides of the clamps and not only one side, because that would cancel out the four wire technique. That's why we're going to add some small pins on the area right here, which we used before, and going to measure on that side. We know that the left part is ground, right part is VGPU. We also know that those pins are ground on the 8-pin connectors. We're hooking that up to the 8-pin ground and we'll connect this one to the VGPU ground and check out the internal resistance. Uh, in the German video we had 1.9 milliohm, now it's 1.7 milliohm. There's always a difference between like the contact resistance, but that's a very low resistance and it's basically a direct connection. And that's also what you would typically see if it's a direct short. So now we're changing this to the vGPU and see what happens. So now it changed to 95 milliohm, which is still extremely low. And that's also the reason why a typical multimeter won't show the correct resistance, but it also shows that it's not a short. Luckily we have this beautiful machine, so we will put the card inside and try to mill out 
the broken part. We still have this leftover acrylic part and we will use this as a base to mount the card on top and then make like a tiny cut with the mill right through here. Try to remove the broken area. Holes with threads are in there, so I just have to mount the card with some screws and should be ready to go. The card is fixed inside a machine with a vacuum table and we will mill away this entire part. First of all, I thought that we're just milling away a tiny piece, but then there would be not enough material left of this tiny arm, so it would break anyway. So we're just going to remove everything, like a, just a rectangle. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you can see it, but if you look at the layers internally, you can still see that there's some, some movement inside, like a crack internally. So we will still have to mill away like one more millimeter. Now taking a look with the macro lens and heavily magnified. The area right here looks quite fine, but you can see in between how all the layers are still like kind of moved in a strange way. And especially here on the bottom right, you can see that there is still something wrong. Unfortunately, there's already the first trace going right above here, so we can't really mill deeper. We would have to mill like one or two millimeters more on the bottom to completely remove the broken area, but yeah, with the traces above, it could be difficult. We will try it this way and see if we already removed the short. The internal GPU resistance is still the same, so we didn't really touch the GPU circuit, that's great. Um, there, there are definitely other circuits in this area, but I don't have any reference values to the card. So that wouldn't even help me even if I would try to measure something. But we will just put it back inside the system and see if we fixed it already. Card is prepared, just hooked up to a long riser cable to the system, just for simple debugging, see if we can get a display signal or not. Hooked up the liquid nitrogen container to the top just for some buffer mass. Let's check it out. So at least there wasn't a direct like OCP trigger, like short circuit trigger. Well, still stuck at VGA detection. That's unfortunate. We're quickly checking the voltages. GPU voltage is present uh, 0.9 volts. Memory voltage, memory voltage 1.35. It's also present, so definitely no short anymore. Like no direct short, which is triggering the power of the card, but yeah. Not sure why it's not getting detected. Maybe there is more damage down there, PTCI Express related. One final test without uh, the riser cable, just to be sure that this is not causing the detection issue. Yeah, still the same, still VGA detection, even though the GPU is getting warm. So still some signal issue. I taped everything except for PCIe X1, just trying if it might be detected as X1 and if there is a damage, this might work, let's see. Well, no, that also didn't help. Just to be safe, also te uh, testing a completely different board, just to be sure that this was not the problem. 
Jo, äh, nee. So far, so bad. By the way, I asked Matthias how this happened and he told me that during the flood the PC was sitting like on a normal table and because all the water was rushing into his apartment, the table basically fell over and like the normal PC, the PC was falling over from a normal desk height on the floor. And that is, that is very harsh, very bad for a PC and that's probably how this happened with the crack in the PCB, which we solved, the shorts should be away. And it's very likely that the GPU or the memory is still working because it's getting warm, we don't have a short. But there's always a possibility of VGA issues. If you have reflow skills, tools, then you might be able to fix this. I don't have the tools, I don't have the skills to do that, so pretty much at the end right here. But I think it was still interesting, at least I hope so. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye bye.